Hey, Craig here. So it's been a while since I made any videos, so I thought I'd uh, try to get back into it, uh, starting with this uh, video on spot welding. All right. Okay, so for those of you who uh, watched some of my previous videos, you'll know that I was making some uh, sheet metal uh, parts. Uh, but part of making these parts is to spot weld the, uh, the joints together like this. So I ended up buying the uh, Harbor Freight spot welder. Uh, this comes in two models, the, uh, the 120, which comes with the cord on it already, and the 240, which you have to buy your own cord. Now, when I first started getting into spot welding, uh, I couldn't really find a whole lot on YouTube about it. Um, so I basically just went to Harbor Freight, bought the uh, bought this spot welder. Uh, of course, later on, I found that uh, uh, Tubal came, uh, you know, a, a popular YouTube uh, old time machinist. I uh, actually did two videos on this. Uh, I'll put some links to it down below if you want to follow up on additional information on uh, spot welding, but he does some really good videos on this. Uh, he has an older Miller spot welder. Um, this is a, <clears throat> a low end. The, uh, the main difference between this spot welder and the kind that he has and the higher end spot welders is it has no timer. So you actually have to know how long to hold the, the switch down for welding. Anyways, so, so basically spot welding, uh, for those who are not familiar with spot welding, is basically uh, joining um, multiple pieces of metal together, usually like two pieces together, uh, by passing a high amount of current through it. I'm by far an expert on this, but I guess the, the copper has low resistance, so the electricity flows through the copper really easy, but steel has a high resistance, so when the current flows through the steel, it actually, um, the steel heats up and it actually melts together. And that's basically what spot welding is. Uh, I'm going to do some spot welds on this in a minute, but I thought I'd just kind of go over some of the basics on how this thing operates. Basically, you have some adjustments, some screws that you're able to adjust the position of this. Uh, the two tips have to uh, line up perfectly in this direction and this direction. There's, it's got tips on there, you can replace it. They're, these are actually consumables. They'll wear down over time. Uh, sometimes if you don't weld it properly, the, the tips burn up and you have to like file or sandpaper them down. The controls, on, uh, one of the key things that I've found in doing this is actually having the correct pressure I can see there, having the correct pressure holding the, the pieces of metal together. And without that pressure, it's just going to spark a lot. So um, the pressure is actually controlled by um, these nuts right here. You just kind of like adjust these down so you get the right pressure for the thickness that you're, you're doing. Um, so you got that. Uh, of course, I talked about the little switch here. This basically, you just have to pulse, pulse it like this for how long. The uh, there's a little stop screw on here, uh, which I never use really. And uh, there's really not much to this thing. Uh, this model here is good for up to three sixteenths worth of uh, steel, mild steel, uh, slightly less for galvanized and uh, stainless steel, I think. Um, I think the 120 version is good for eighth inch, something like that. Um, before I go on to uh, showing the actual welding, I just thought I'd mention uh, that I tried making a control box for it. Uh, like I mentioned before, there's no timer on it, a uh, pulse timer, you basically push the button and it say welds for like, um, you know, three quarters of a second or something like that. You can adjust the exact uh, time of weld. Um, this doesn't have it, which makes it really hard to get a consistent weld all the time if you're doing a bunch of them. Uh, and it can actually lead to kind of like, I don't know what you call like mental fatigue. 
if you're doing a bunch of them, you're constantly trying to figure out just exactly how long to hold it down. Um, so I was trying to come up with a consistent, you know, easy to use method that anybody could just pick up and do, you know. Um, so I made this control box. Um, I got a, uh, uh, I guess a spot welding control module, but um, I guess I didn't, it, either who I bought it from or I didn't read the fine print, uh, uh, this control module, I guess, is only made for like little battery packs. So I put this together and I think the, whatever they call this, the electronic ACS, um, anyways, I'm not into electronics really, um, but uh, I, I think this may have burned up or something, I'm not sure. So I think this is way undersized, but uh, anyways, I had it with the, with the foot pedal. Um, so I don't know if anybody else knows about um, timers, you know, pulse timers for uh, spot welding for something like this. Uh, yeah, let me know. That would be uh, much appreciated. Um, otherwise, I may end up having to get like an industrial grade uh, spot welder, which even the handheld version like this starts at like, I don't know, $1,300 or something like that. So, so I thought I'd just show you some uh, other options here on the computer that I've been kind of looking into. Um, this is the uh, kind of the handheld similar to the one from, similar to the one from Harbor Freight, uh, but it has a timer. Uh, you can see right here, there's a little knob for adjust, uh, adjustment knob for timing. Uh, I think there's a current control. Uh, one of the models has a, like a pulse. So you just push the button and it like pulses however many times, 20 times or something like that. Uh, to pulse weld, it's got a dial select for the actual pressure. Um, it's got adjustable, um, whatever you call it, electrodes. I think this, this is a more professional unit. This is, I guess, used for... Um, Welding repair. These are these are rated for welding repairs, not really for manufacturing. Um, but uh, this one is that. Uh, one I was talking to the guy from Techna, uh, the manufacturer, and he says if you use this one a lot, um, the electrodes, the whole thing starts to overheat. That's why they have this uh, water cooled version. Uh, so this one actually would have a higher what they call duty cycle. Um, so I think this is what they call a 50% duty cycle, and, uh, well, they're both 50% duty cycle, um, but this is better rated for, like, more production. Alright, so the other option is, um, for production would be, like, a rocker arm, this thing right here, but they can get pretty pricey. Um, I think the lowest, I think they said the lowest one was, uh... About five thousand dollars or so, four. Yeah, I think this was five thousand. I'm not sure if this exact model, but um, let me go back to this. This right here was actually close to like thirty six hundred or something like that. So I figured if you know doing that, you might as well go to a, a rocker. But uh, anyways, those prices aren't really in the the cards for me right now. I would prefer to be able to take the uh, the Harbor Freight and just attach a timer to it, but um, I'm still kind of searching for that option. Looks like Oliver wants to be in the video. Hey, boy, how you doing, huh? Hi. <laughs> okay, I have a really small shop here, so I actually have to put the spot welder. Uh, the only outlets that I have set up for this are actually back in this corner here um i just have it plugged in the air conditioning circuit here so yeah so i have it this plugged in back here uh, there's actually a computer right here for uh, the hydraulic press um but i got a piece of metal up here to kind of block it so so basically you just take uh your two pieces of metal or however many pieces you're using um Stick it in between there, push it down, and then with your finger on the little pulse switch here, you just
I usually end up pulsing it, uh, which is like, you know, pressing it over and over again. Um, I think there's actually um, spot welders that actually do pulsing. Um, just keep pushing that. And uh, you can see the weld right there. There you go. Um, try to pull it apart here. Yeah, so you see it's got a pretty good weld there. I don't know what I pulsed it like three or four times. If you just hold it down, uh, it's just hard to judge how long to hold it down. So that's kind of what I've been doing. So as far as cleaning it up, uh, you know, if it, uh, you held it on there too long and the tip started melting and stuff, what I usually end up doing is just taking a file, regular file, and just kind of filing it down till I get, you know, down to bare copper and basically do that on both sides. You want to try and keep the, the tip uh, the same size. I'm not sure what that is. It's maybe three sixteenths or something like that. Uh, sometimes you have to kind of like shape it because if you go down too far, you know, it gets bigger and bigger. So uh, like I said, you can, when you buy this, it actually comes with two sets of tips. So, um, and you can buy more tips, but uh, to try and reduce the cost. Uh, and then I try to, you know, file it down to make it look, make it uh, smoother. You want to try and keep the uh, the tips, you know, flat against each other. So you're going to want to kind of be like this, I guess. So when you're filing, so they're both flat. Now one thing I have noticed that uh, when welding, if I just do like two little pieces like this, it seems to be easier to weld. Uh, when I do a larger part like this, I end up having more problems with the weld. Um, I'm not sure if it's because, you know, there's there's less material, this is more material, um, or if there's something else in, in play there that I don't know about. Like I said, I'm just kind of getting into this. All right, well, if you have any questions on spot welding, I'd be uh, happy to try and answer them for you. Um, also, if anybody who has uh, more information that they can kind of share with us, that would be uh, awesome um, in the description down below or in the comments down below, I mean. Um, all right, well, if you like this video, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave any comment down below, like I said. And uh, it's been so long since I did this, I forgot my spiel. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, there should be a button up here somewhere. And uh, thanks for watching.